Hi, I'm Jack Buffington for RobotBrigade.com. It's been a while since I've posted something on this channel, and I recently completed a project that I intend to enter into a uh, robotics competition. Uh, it's called RoboGames. It's formerly known as RoboOlympics, and uh, it'll be happening this April uh, 6th through the 9th in uh, California. Uh, if you happen to be around the Alameda Fairgrounds on that weekend, uh, you might go check it out. There's all kinds of events happening, and um, I'm entering in one that is a uh, knit and all crawler is what they're calling it. And in this event, the idea is that you need to uh, have something motivated solely by nic uh, nickel titanium alloy get across a two meter track. Um, I think that most of the entries in this event would be actuated with legs, uh, but I found a way to create rotary motion that I think is a little bit faster. Uh, so here is my entry. Uh, I'm calling it the racing snail. Um, I don't think that uh, by posting this at this point uh, it will give anybody an advantage over me since it just takes a long time to build these kind of things. Um, so let's take a look at how it works. So here we have the uh, racing snail, and I'll, give, I'll turn it on here. Now, given that this is actuated by something other than a motor, the, the uh, motion is a little bit uh, jumpy, but you take a look at how it works. So here we go. As of now, I still have a little bit of a pull to the right or to the left. Okay, so here is my mechanism. If you look very closely, you can see three wires that are shaped in a triangle going from the edges um, through a little Y-shaped. It's going to be something like a piston rod that then connects to a central crankshaft in the center. And... Uh, these wires are made out of a nickel, nickel titanium alloy that contracts about 3% when it gets above a certain temperature. And I'm raising the temperature in the wire by passing current through it, about an amp, um, each time I want one to contract. And so by actuating these in sequence, I'm able to uh, make the crank turn. And uh, something that I'm doing here is see how I'm holding it here. I'm not just running it in sequence. Uh, I am actually using a little magnetometer with uh, it's, a, it's a magnetic rotary encoder and I have a little magnet on the, the shaft so uh, it actually knows where it is and isn't just blindly uh, turning. And the thought was is this would make it run a little faster and, and it does. Um, if it does tend to get stuck um, Sometimes it did when I was initially developing it. It would help kick it out of that. I have it pretty well tuned at this point. I'd say the only thing that I'd do to change this in the future is um, rearrange things so that I have six wires instead of three. Uh, I originally planned on six, but then I was uh, suspecting that the wires might touch if, uh, and short each other out. Um, so I, I switched to three. But as you can see, it does make some, you know, lurching motions, but I think it'll still be faster than uh, any competition that I may have. Um, the processor, like on my mapping robot, is a uh, parallax propeller. And other than the magnetic rotary encoder, I'd say there's nothing really special going on with this. It's sort of just uh, the unique idea of the mechanism. Um, so if you happen to be in the Bay Area on April 6th to 9th on 2023, there's lots of interesting competitions going on with robotics. Uh, you'll have this one on Friday, but uh, I think the big draw of the competition is the fighting robots. So if you saw BattleBots or Robot Wars uh, on TV, that will be there under the uh, name of the Combots, Cut, uh, Combots Cup. Um, and it's a lot of fun. So you may even see some of the same competitors that compete in BattleBots 
there. I know uh, some of my friends compete in both. So, all right. Thanks for watching.